كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا الحمد لله الحمد لله خالق الوجود من العدم وجاعل النور من الظلم ومخرج الصبر من الألم وملق التوبة على الندم فنشكره على المصائب كما نشكره على النعم ونصلي على رسوله الأكرم ذي الشرف الأشم والنور الأتم والكتاب المحكم وكمال النبيين والخاتم سيد ولد آدم الذي بشر به عيسى بن مريم ودعا لبعثته إبراهيم عليه السلام حين كان يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم فصلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى أتباعه خير الأمم الذين بارك الله بهم كافة الناس العرب منهم والعجم فالحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا والحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا والحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذا بشر أحدهم بالأنثى ظل وجهه مسودا وهو كظيم يتوارى من القوم من سوء ما بشر به أيمسكه على هون أم يدسه في التراب ألا ساء ما يحكمون للذين لا يؤمنون بالآخرة مثل السوء ولله المثل الأعلى وهو العزيز الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي آمين يا رب العالمين Inshallah, in today's brief khutbah, I'd like to share with you something that I feel is timeless. It's something that Allah Azza wa addresses in His book that was not just a problem for ancient Arabs in the desert, but is actually a problem across many, many societies and it pervades even today. And the unfortunate reality is that the evil that is being talked about, that is being addressed in the ayat of Surah An-Nahl, these are ayat of the 16th surah, the, this evil that's being talked about is something that has somehow survived even among Muslims. Even though Allah Azza wa addressed this disease as a disease that the people of shirk used to have, for some reason or another, shaitan has been successful in maintaining this virus across the generations in many, many lands of the Muslims, in many families, in many cultures uh, among the Muslims. But the way I want to talk about this, inshallah ta'ala, first and foremost is how the ayat after the subject matter are. Me meaning I'm going to begin not from the ayat where the subject begins, but rather where the ayat conclude. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَيَجْعَلُونَ لِلَّهِ مَا يَكْرَهُونَ they, they put for Allah what they hate themselves. They give to Allah what they hate themselves. See the Quraysh, they used to have this practice. They had idols and they believed in Allah too actually. There are ayat in Surah Al-Ankabut that make that clear. That if you ask them who created the skies and the earth, وَلَا إِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Allah. If you were to ask them who created the skies and the earth, even they will tell you it is Allah. But at the same time, what they used to do was they had other gods and other priorities. And even within what they used to eat, for example, they would take the best of the meat and take it for themselves. And take the leftovers and leave that as a dedication for the idols. Or leave it for Allah, that's for Allah, you see. So they would use basically, give to Allah what they don't want for themselves. Similarly, of course, the Arabs had a tradition of not wanting daughters. They didn't like daughters. They, think that they thought having a daughter is a humiliation. But they had no problem attributing daughters to Allah. Allah and, and Allah Azza wa Jalla talks about that in the Quran. فَأَصْفَاكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ بِالْبَنِينَ وَاتَّخَذَ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنَاثًا You preferred sons for yourselves, but he somehow Allah took angels as daughters for himself. Where do you come up with these ridiculous claims? You wouldn't want that for yourself. But behind it is a mentality. And the mentality is that Allah will be happy so long as you give him something. Just give him something. But most of your life and everything that you work for and your priorities are for yourself. You have to live for yourself, not for Allah. 
And so even if you're going to give Allah something, it's almost like, you know, nobody likes paying taxes. <laughs> and they like to get away with giving as little tax as possible. Well, giving zakah to Allah, giving sadaqah to Allah, giving it a dedication or a devotion to Allah, even giving time to Allah, is something you just kind of have to do so that you can live the rest of your life for yourself. That is the sick mentality that these people had. And that is what Allah comments on when He says, they give to Allah what they don't like for themselves. They'll give Allah the minimum amount of time, they'll give Allah the, the least, the, the worst of their, de their dedications or their charities, etc. وَتَصِفُوا أَلْسِنَتُهُمُ الْكَذِبِ And their tongues are very eloquent at co coming up with lies. You know Allah could just say, يَقُولُونَ الْكَذِبِ They say lies. But He says, تَصِفُوا أَلْسِنَتُهُمُ الْكَذِبِ Al-wasf in Arabic, the ability to describe something. Not everybody's good at describing things. So Allah is talking about people that are eloquent. Then he uses the word alsina, and alsina you'll find in the Quran every time tongues are used, is used for people who are very good at words. They're very good with their words, so they have these flowery, elaborate explanations of lies that they beautify for themselves and the people around them. Now, what is that lie? Anna lahumul husna, that they will have the absolute best. That somehow whatever little they've given to Allah is such a big deal that they should expect from Allah the best of the best of the best. This is their lie. لا جرم أنهم في أن لهم النار. There's no doubt about it. These people, all they have is the fire. وأنهم مفرطون. And they are going to be stuffed and then stuffed further inside the fire. Not not even مدخلون. They're going to be entered. إفراط in Arabic is to go beyond the limit. There's one thing to get pushed into hellfire. It's another to get pushed and then shoved even further. That's mufratun. That's very serious ayat. And then, one of the few places in the Quran, very rarely, Allah Azza wa Jal swears by Himself. And you have to understand this subject matter. Allah Azza wa Jal swears on serious occasions. It's not something small when Allah Himself swears. But even more serious when He swears by Himself. And when Allah swears, when in Arabic when you swear by Allah, you normally say wallahi. That's what you say. But even if that is not enough, and you have to go out of your way, you say, Tallahi. The ta is used. And in this next ayah, we find, Tallahi laqad arsalna ila umami min qablik. I swear by Allah. Allah Himself is swearing by Himself. We had sent to many nations before them too. But what did, what did shaitan do with all of them? فَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَعْمَالَهُمْ Shaitan somehow beautified their deeds to them. They did evil things and they were so convinced that they're doing some great thing. Or this is the way you're supposed to think, or this is the way you're supposed to behave. فَهُوَ وَلِيُّهُمُ الْيَوْمُ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Then he is their friend then. On that day, on the day of judgment, then that's it. That's their friend. That's who they listen to. That's who they, whose dictates and whose beautification they accepted. This is some very harsh ayat about people who have the wrong kind of mindset. But these are the concluding ayat. These are not the ayat where this conversation begins. So I want to now take you back and tell you where this passage begins. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَيَجْعَلُونَ لِلَّهِ الْبَنَاتِ they, uh, they attribute, they put in place for Allah daughters. Subhanahu. How perfect He is above that allegation. And then he says, وَلَهُمْ مَا يَشْتَهُونَ But they get to have what they love having. So they want to give Allah daughters, but they love having what? Sons, right? Now listen to this next ayah. وَإِذَا بُشِّرَ أَحَدُهُمْ بِالْأُنْثَى When one of them is given the congratulations of the girl. So this one is waiting for his wife to deliver the child. There are no sonograms back in the day. And now finally the baby comes out, he wa he's waiting to hear the news, and he was hoping to hear that it's a boy, and the woman comes out, the wet nurse comes out, or whoever comes out, you know, the, the midwife comes out, and she says, it's a girl. And it, Allah says, al-untha. Now in any culture you say untha, not al-untha. In other words, you say a girl, not the girl. But to Allah Azza wa she is special. So He says, al-untha. Not, وَإِذَا بُشِّرَ أَحَدُهُمْ بِالْأُنثَى بِالْأُنثَى التعريف للتكريم هنا So he does, he honors this daughter that's been born So he's been given the news that this is a girl And as soon as he hears it's a girl ظَلَّ وَجْهُهُ مُسْوَدًّا His face turns dark there's a, there's, He doesn't say anything yet Allah doesn't say he said anything You could just see the darkness, the cloud hanging over his face This is Allah describing a mushrik Someone who doesn't believe in Allah and his, his crime with shirk, on the opposite end, he gets to have what he wants. And his shirk is then furthered, and he doesn't appreciate his own mother. 
When you don't appreciate a daughter, it's like you're not appreciating your own mother. That's where you came from. And so his face becomes darkened and depressed. And you know, before I even go further, this news that it's a girl, this is supposed to be a disease of the mushrikun. They're supposed, they're supposed to get sad when you hear that a daughter is born. Not the believer. Not the believer. Not the believer in this Prophet anyway, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you know how many ahadith there are? One after another, after another, after another, about daughters. About daughters. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made such a big deal out of daughters. It's not a small subject. It's not one hadith or two hadith. Hadith after hadith after hadith. لا يكون لأحدكم ثلاث بنات أو ثلاث أخوات فأحسن إليهن إلا دخل الجنة there is not a single one of you that has three daughters or even, you know what, three sisters. And he's good to them. He's good to them. Except that he goes into Jannah. Your goodness to your daughters would land you in Jannah. Another hadith, he says, Lam ya'idha. He didn't bury her alive. Okay, alhamdulillah, he didn't do that. Walam yu'thir waladahu alayha. And he didn't give preference to his son over his daughter. He, that, that one gets Jannah. So he didn't compare his daughter to his son. He didn't think having a girl, oh, I wish I had a boy, man. I was really looking forward to a boy. What are we gonna do? This is such a burden on my family. Now I have to pay for her education and it won't even pay back. She's not even gonna get a job and provide for the family. She's gonna get married and be somebody else's family and then we have to pay for the wedding on top of that. Oh, all these expenses, man. And he keeps giving preference to his son or wanting to have a son, even that mentality can be a block for you from getting into Jannah. There are uh, half these hadith are about a direct ticket to Jannah, and the other half of the hadith are actually about how they are going to be satar, satara lahu yawm al qiyamah. Satarahu min al nar yawm al qiyamah. These girls will become a barrier between him and, and hellfire. <coughs> They'll be the wall between him and hell, his daughters. Allah didn't say that about sons, by the way. Allah didn't say that about sons, He said that about daughters. It's an honor Allah gave to these girls that are born in our households. I'm reminded, I say this often, Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed me with four daughters. So I, I'm one over the hadith limit. You know, Alhamdulillah. And so, but I, I will tell you something. When my third daughter was born, I had two daughters in a row. And then when my third daughter was born, I was really happy. And so I got a bunch of donuts and I went to the masjid. For Aisha, I'm just going to give everybody donuts. Because we had a girl again. And this brother came outside the masjid, he said, Oh, donuts, what happened? Good news? I was like, yeah, it's a girl. And he said, Inshallah, next time. <laughs> That's what he said, Inshallah, next time. And I wanted to slap him so hard. This is what the mushrik would have said. This is what the people who didn't believe in Allah would have said. You're saying this? You're saying this? The fact that I had my third daughter, I can actually celebrate those words of the Prophet ﷺ. I can celebrate those words. What bigger congratulations can there be? And yet, we have done such a number in many cultures across the world on the stigma of having a daughter. There are, and it's been such a huge number has been done. There are even mother-in-laws. Mother-in-laws are mad at their daughter-in-laws because they didn't have a, a son. And they're yelling at them for not having a son. The kind of ignorance that is beyond imagination. You're a woman yourself, do you realize what you're saying? Do you realize how insane that is? But she's putting her, her, you know, her daughter-in-law down and, tell, and threatening her, he's gonna marry another one because you're not capable of giving him a boy. <laughs> the, um, the level of ignorance that we've reached, and you would think these are people of Qur'an? These are people of deen? You know? And this, by the way, this ignorance is not just limited to people who aren't religious. These are people with big beards and hijabs and memorizing Qur'an. Deen is everywhere else except in... What, what happened to these ayat? Where did they go? And his face turns black. His face turns dark. He, can't, he gets depressed. And then Allah says, he almost has no words. Min ima bushira bihi From the ugliness of the congratulations that he's been given. He's almost thinking, why are you congratulating me? You should be feeling sorry for me. I wish you never told me. And then he adds, Allah adds, وَهُوَ كَظِيمٌ 
You know, wa huwa ka, he says, wa idha bushira ahaduhum bil untha, walla wajhuhu muswaddan, wa huwa kadheem. And he's constantly swallowing his anger. He's not letting the words out. Kadhama in Arabic, to swallow. Like, just like something bad tasting is in his mouth all the time. That's what he looks like all the time, now that the, the news of the girl is there. He hears the girl crying and he just, it bothers him. It irks him. It's a humiliation to him. And then on top of that, يَتَوَارَى مِنَ الْقَوْمِ He stays away and covers himself up from meeting people. He doesn't like socializing with people. Because he's too embarrassed, they might ask him and he might have to say. And he might even have to smile. Yeah, mashallah, it's a girl. He's saying mashallah with a smile, but inside he's dying. He's dying. And Allah is capturing this entire disgusting psychology. This, these disgusting emotions. Allah is painting all of them out in these ayat. يَتَوَارَى مِنَ الْقَوْمِ مِنْ سُوءِ مَا بُشِّرَ بِهِ Out of the ugliness of the congratulations he was given. أَيُمْسِكُهُ عَلَى هُونٍ This was the mushrik back in the day. Should he keep holding on to this girl despite the humiliation? Should I just let her be? Even though this is such a terrible thing? You know the Arabs back in the day, they used to pit, put, the, the worst thing they used to do is the next words, right? Am yadussuhu fit turab. Should he bury her in the dirt? That's what they used to do, bury their girls alive. But then the, the more uh, uh, sane option, the more humane option for them was, I will let her stay alive, but I'm so angry at my wife who gave birth to a girl, that I will put them in the tent next to mine, I will never speak to them again, I'll leave the food outside. That's what I'll do. And I'll never go back there again. So they're completely, these women are just mu'allaqa. فَتَذْرُوهَا كَالْمُعَلَّقَ She's just left hanging. She can't go somewhere else, and she's just sitting there because she had a daughter. That's her fault. So this is, these are his two options. Should I leave, should I stay with her even though it's humiliating? Or should I just bury this girl in the dirt and get the, the problem over with? <laughs> what terrible decisions they make. Now alhamdulillah, we don't go that far. At least not to my knowledge. But you know, Allah did not just highlight the crime of burying the child, or abandoning the child, or being humiliated. Allah highlighted everything from the facial expression onwards. And this is something important to note in the Qur'an. Allah does not just criticize actions. Allah does not just criticize actions. Allah criticizes emotions. Allah criticizes facial expressions. ثُمَّ نَظَرْ ثُمَّ عَبَسَ وَبَصَرْ ثُمَّ أَدْبَرَ What is that? Somebody staring, frowning. Just a facial expression is captured in the Qur'an as an expression of arrogance. In this case as an expression of shirk. As an expression of the lack of appreciation for what Allah has given you. And so now, after these ayat, لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ People who don't believe in the afterlife. مَثَلُ السَّوْءُ They have the worst example. The example of the, the ugliest kind. Allah is saying this example, the scene that He has painted, is the example that is the epitome of ugliness. There is nothing uglier to Allah than this. And this is a demonstration of people who have no expectations of standing in front of Allah. They have no iman in the akhirah. This disease. Can you imagine? How Allah makes something a big deal, and we celebrate the exact opposite, and don't see a problem with it? This is what happens when people abandon the book of Allah. So now, He says, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ And for Allah is the highest example, going back to the shirk that they do. And He's the ultimate authority, all wise. And now, after He said this, this must be enough, you know, like, Allah has said already, these people are so bad, they don't even believe in the akhirah. That should be enough. He didn't stop. Allah's anger at these kinds of people is so intense. The next ayah is, وَلَوْ يُؤَاخِذُ اللَّهُ النَّاسَ بِظُلْمِهِمْ مَا تَرَكَ عَلَيْهَا مِنْ If Allah were to grab people because of the wrong that they do, there would not be a single creature left alive on the earth. This crime, had Allah not been one that will, had Allah been the one to grab people as soon as they do a crime, the entire earth would have been wiped out as a result of this crime. As a result of this crime. مَا تَرَكَ عَلَيْهَا مِنْ وَلَكِنْ يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى No, however, He gives them extra time. Until a time that has been decreed by Him, named by Him. فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً 
وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ But when their time comes, when the deadline arrives, they're not going to be able to bring it any earlier and they're not going to be able to de delay it at that point. Now we get to the ayat that I started with. وَيَجْعَلُونَ لِلَّهِ مَا يَكْرَهُونَ وَتَصِفُوا أَلْسِنَتُهُمُ الْكَذِبُ They put for Allah what they hate themselves and their, lies, their, their tongues make elaborate lies that they're going to have the best. No, no, لا جرما أَنَّ لَهُمُ النَّارِ وَأَنَّهُمْ مُفْرَطُونَ Those people, they get fire. So many ayat, one after the other, after the other, after the other, about how angry Allah is at people who are, dis who are saddened at the idea of daughters. They're saddened at that idea, subhanAllah. Now let's think about the positive. Let's switch the subject. What are we supposed to do with our daughters? What are they? When the Prophet says, فَأَحْسَنَ إِلَيْهِنَّ In another hadith, وَاتَّقَ اللَّهَ فِيهِنَّ he had taqwa of Allah when it came to them. When he spoke to them, he had taqwa of Allah. When he thought about them, he had taqwa of Allah. When he was thinking about getting them married, he had taqwa of Allah. He wasn't thinking, let me just get this over with. Why don't you just marry him? So what if you don't like him? Stop embarrassing my family. Just get married to your cousin. And you forces her to get married. He has no taqwa of Allah. A woman comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and says, my father forced me to marry someone. What should I do? He got me married and I didn't want to get married, but he still got me married. And he said that nikah is batil, that, that marriage is null and void, it's cancelled. It doesn't count. How many Muslim girls are being forced into getting married? And when they say no, they get yelled at and psychologically tortured. Why are you not listening? Why are you making things hard on the family? What is wrong with you? Why are you embarrassing us like this? I knew I should have had a son. They have to hear all this garbage. All this garbage. And all of it is done away with, which is one word, فَأَحْسَنَ إِلَيْهِنَّ وَاتَّقَ اللَّهَ فِيهِنَّ the Prophet ﷺ said, when, the, when he talks to them, he has taqwa of Allah. They are going to be speaking on Judgment Day about what rights they had. Allah has given them certain rights. And you are, your job as wali, your job as wali is not to tell them what to do, is to protect their rights. That's your, that's your job as a father. That's my job as a father, is to protect their rights, to ensure their happiness. Not your happiness, their happiness. That's having taqwa of Allah in their matter. We tell them to have taqwa of Allah, so they should do whatever we want. It's the other way around. It's the other way around. <coughs> this is the an amana of daughters. How soft we have to speak with our daughters. How kind we have to be with them. How, you know, next time, so I've seen so many cases, that there, there are people that email me from all over the world, and they tell me, you know, my father, the girl tells me, my father tells me I'm fat, and I'm ugly, and nobody's gonna marry me. And, could, could, and I can't say anything because he's my father. So could you please tell me what to do? <laughs> I don't know what to tell this girl. I do know what to tell her father though. Ittaqillah ya rajul. How are you going to stand in front of Allah? Just because she lives under your home, just because you were, she was born in your family, just because she's your, under your wilaya, does not mean you own her. She is the property of Allah. She's Amatullah, just like you are Abdullah. You will be standing in front of Allah. I will be standing in front of Allah. And we will have to answer for every word that comes out of our mouth. فَأَحْسَنَ إِلَيْهِنَّ وَاتَّقَ اللَّهَ فِيهِنَّ He had to be good to them. Be your best to your daughters. Show them your kindness. Show them your love. Instill confidence in them. Believe in them. You know, ensure their happiness. And then on top of that, just anytime you get even close to oppressing them, saying hurtful things to them, just remember, what taqallaha fi hinna. You had to have taqwa in their matter. I didn't even get into like, you know, the, 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 the words of the Prophet Wasallam. He didn't prefer his son over his, his daughters. <coughs> didn't do that, you know. And what, you know what that means, right? My son gets old, I'm going to do all these things with him. No, you're going to do these things with him and your daughters. You're going to keep them with you. You're going to go on a trip? No, no, this trip is for the boys. Yes, if there's a trip for the boys, then there better be another trip for the girls. Because if you want Jannah that badly, then you can't distinguish between the boys and the girls in your family. You as a father have to give equal love. This is our religion. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. We make life ugly for ourselves and for our children. 
And we have to come back to the, the, the beauty that this religion is. May Allah Azza wa Jal allow all of us to be good fathers, good brothers, good awliya of our families. May Allah Azza wa Jal never, never allow us to forget the obligation, the responsibility we have towards our daughters. The daughters that are sitting here, don't, tell, don't email this to your father and say, Abba, watch this. Don't do that. Don't be selfish in your religion. Don't be selfish. You only want people to hear what will make your life better. This is, and we started with this. Everybody wants something for themselves, they give Allah the leftovers. People use religion to get their way. People use religion to get their way. Allah knows when people use religion to get their way. This religion is not for you to use. This religion is for you to serve. To serve Allah. Not yourself. Allah will, Allah will protect you. Allah will protect your rights. But don't use it as a weapon. Don't quote a hadith at people, an ayat at people. In a sermon it's okay. That's my job. But inside the household, I'm not going to go and quote things to my wife or to my daughters. And they shouldn't be quoting things at me. That's not what this deen and its ayat are for. Not for arguments and winning arguments. That's, that's abuse. That's abuse of Allah's words. That's abuse of the words of the Prophet wasallam. And so many people do it. A father is telling his daughter to do X, Y, Z. She doesn't want to do it. And he says, walidayni ihsana. Haven't you read Quran? That ain't about Quran, my friend. That's about what you want. And you're imposing it on her. Using the ayat as a weapon. This is not right. This isn't right. That is not how, it was, not how it was ever done. It was ever done. So may Allah Azza wa Jal protect us from being abusive to the word of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the beautiful sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah Azza wa Jal soften our hearts towards our families, especially our daughters. May Allah give us the ability to raise good daughters, good sons, that they may become the, the, the carriers of the future generations of Islam. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al-Hakim. Wa nafa'ani wa iyyakum bil ayat wa dhikr al-Hakim.